let me uh, do it this way. And the kind of the selling point for the approach that I will be advocating for is that it's really one single sign convention you need for the rest of the semester or, you know, for the rest of geometric optics, both for lenses and mirrors. So let me uh, show you with the examples, both uh, one example for lens and another example for mirror. So this is uh, what I might call a, a standard or maybe default setup for lens or slash mirror optics. And uh, in the lecture, I've explained how I hate mirrors because <laughs> of all the overlaps, and I'll try to avoid using mirrors whenever I can. But you know, in case you get mirror questions on homework and whatnot. So for lens, it would look like you have a converging lens. Let me draw it as a convex convex lens of some focal length f. I'm going to draw two dots to indicate the uh, focal point. Um, so if you have are considering an equivalent setup with the mirror optics, you would still have a converging mirror, which looks like a concave mirror of some focal length f. And we had the formulas and whatnot that gives you the expression for this focal length in terms of radius curvature. <laughs> I'm assuming you know that. Um, so for the default setup, the object would uh, need to be placed outside of the focal length distance. So I'm imagining some arrow setup. And with this setup, you can kind of do a ray tracing to figure out where the image will be. Let me do that quickly. So this is one principal ray that uh, is instant parallel, so it'll go through the focal point on the other side for lens. Uh, and the principal ray number two, it'll go through the middle of the lens, so it'll continue on undeflected and continuing to trace it. I form an image here uh, where they cross. That's where this tip will form an image, and I can imagine doing that for every other point along the object to get this image. Uh, let me label my object distance and my image distance. For the mirror optics, this is what it looks like doing the ray tracing for mirrors. Uh, the first principal ray, which is instant parallel to the mirror, or, or instant on the mirror, parallel to the axis, that uh, reflects in such a way that it's going to go through the focal point. And here you are beginning to see my dislike for mirror optics because your rays tend to, to kind of overlap and double over and it makes your di diagram look more busier. Um, the principal ray number two, that's the mirror version of this ray. It's instant on the middle of the mirror, the point that intersects with the axis. And it's instant in such a way that you can clearly see that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of uh, um, reflection, that these two angles are the same. And when you trace these out, then you get the this as your image. And you can kind of see similarities here. Um, the How far away the image is, it kind of looks similar to how far away it was in the case of lens. So this is the object distance, and this is the image distance. So what I've diagrammed using ray tracing rules, you can get quantitative answers for these quantities, object distance, image distance, and focal length using the thin lens equation. The thin lens equation says reciprocal of the object distance plus the image distance is equal to reciprocal of f. And this applies to lenses, thin lens equation. And the reason I was hesitating was it also uh, it applies to mirrors. So you could call it thin mirror equation. <laughs> but it, it's fine. So this equation applies to lenses and mirrors. And if you work it, out, work it out for this scenario, for this default setup, you can see that it applies. You can get an answer. And the reason for introducing the sign convention is to emphasize that this uh, single equation, it is uh, so much more broadly applicable than this uh, single default setup. I guess uh, thinking of all the combinations, um, you can think of 
potentially maybe eight different scenarios where this same equation will still continue to apply to. Uh, maybe not eight. I think in the lecture, I gave you three different scenarios and said that uh, um, that covers everything because um, some of those eight you can't quite get to um, with a single lens anyway. Um, so in order to have this single equation applied to those many different scenarios, that's not even pictured here. That's where we introduce the sign conventions for a thin lens equation. It's really a way to keep reusing this form of the equation for scenarios that are very different from this. For example, you can imagine uh, what happens if your object is somewhere here inside the focal length where you won't get a real image, you'll actually get a virtual image. Or you can think of a scenario, what if we are dealing with not a converging lens, but a diverging lens, um, where your focal length uh, it would do the same thing that the converging lens does. All those different scenarios, you can use this one equation with this application of the sign convention. So what the sign convention is going to say is for each of these quantities that's up there, the object distance and the image distance and the focal length, that we can assign them signs depending on what situation they are in. So the possible choices are either a positive sign or a negative sign. Those are your two choices. And um, I'm calling both of these default setup because um, this is the setup where all three quantities will be positive. So for focal length, uh, it's going to be positive if uh, I have a setup where it's a converging arrangement. I um, specify the converging lens and a converging mirror. So uh, my focal length here is positive for both of them. And I think with the focal length, this uh, sign convention is so ubiquitous, you even see uh, lenses that are diverging, some, you know, like this, something that you will see in your lab in a bit, uh, described as having a negative focal length. We say, oh, it has a focal length of uh, minus 15 centimeters, or something like that. So with the focal length, to get a negative sign, um, you would be dealing with a, um, an optical element that will give you a diverging arrangement. So if you have a diverging uh, lens shaped like this, or a diverging mirror where it's a convex mirror, <laughs> that's why I don't use a convex concave description here instead of converging and diverging. So if you have a diverging optical element, that will give you a negative uh, focal length. And that's uh, quite commonly used that you can even, you hear it even in the description of the focal length themselves. It's in the discussion of the sign convention for the object and image distances where you kind of have to think through, you kind of have to um, be careful in how you state it so that you can use the one sign convention for everything instead of, um, this is something that I haven't seen in any textbooks. Even the textbook that we use, they're slightly not as careful as I would like them to be. That leads them to having two different sign conventions, one for lenses and one for mirror. And I think that's uh, unnecessarily confusing. Um, so let me give you the sign convention with this particular care that I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to take. Um, so the, the care that I take is how I describe the sides. So the sign of positive and minus, it does come down to the distinction of whether the object and image are on the same side or the opposite side. So same side would be, you know, the default setup. So this setup, um, However you put it, it's on the same side as the relevant side. So with the lens, we can divide the sides this way. So I have this side that the object is on, and this side, this real image is on. And uh, the care I want to take is how we label these sides. I think uh, the way 
many textbooks do it is they describe in terms of the side that the object is on. That runs into two issues. One, the side object is on. It will be difficult um, to describe in terms of the deal because uh, you run into circular thing. Don't want to do that. So instead of dealing with the side the object is on, the way um, I want to work through the language for the sign convention is in terms of the light rays. The light, ra the light rays come from one side and goes out the other side. So by paying attention to light rays, we can talk about incoming side or incident side and outgoing side. Uh, with the mirrors, we can use the same language. So we have light rays coming in here. So we have incident side here. And now what appears to change for mirrors is because mirrors reflect. The outgoing side is actually the same side as incident side. That's fine. So we'll just uh, label this side out incident side and outgoing side. No. Uh, law of physics says that <laughs> incoming side can also be the outgoing side, especially you have mirrors. So with that careful language in mind, what we would say is that the image distance is positive if your image forms on the same side as the outgoing side. So we would say same side as outgoing side. And this image distance will become negative if uh, it's the opposite side as outgoing side. In terms of lenses, that means an image somehow forms on this side, the instant side. In terms of mirrors, it actually means the opposite side as outgoing side. It means the image forms somewhere here, um, opposite from instant side. And if you're careful on how you refer to the sides, then you can avoid having to use two different sign conventions for lenses and mirrors. You can use one same sign convention for both of them if you are careful on how you refer to your two sides, incident and outgoing. So that's for image. With the object, um, so here, I guess the object is on the same side as incident side. So you'll say, okay, same side as incident side means your object has distances positive. One might think, um, is this a scenario ever going to happen? Could uh, your object be on the opposite side as the incident side? And um, I guess if you are thinking of a single lens setup, then the, uh, the answer is no. Because if you imagine moving this object over here, then the whichever side the object is on becomes the instant side. So it's not like moving the object will somehow change your sign for the object. What I will tell you is that if you are dealing with a multi-lens setup, you can actually have uh, what is considered to be object for a second element um, to be uh, to be on the um, opposite side as the instant side. So imagine this uh, scenario here. In this setup, imagine I'm adding a second lens here. For example, the way we analyze these two lens optics is that the image of the first uh, optical element, this, acts like an object for this uh, second optical element. For this uh, second optical element, this is my instant side. My object is on the opposite side. So this can and does happen. When this happens, we call this virtual object. And in fact, um, that's what this uh, negative sign uh, represents. Um, so whenever you have negatively signed object or image, you are dealing with a virtual object, in case object, or a virtual image. And I think a virtual image uh, is more commonly seen and more easily understood by people. In fact, I have conceptual questions on that. Um, a virtual image um, is image where image distance is negative. So um, in case of lenses, that would be the image forms on this side, same side as object, or opposite side as the outgoing side. In case of mirrors, it would be the image of, that forms on this side, um, opposite side from the object, or the um, opposite side as the outgoing side. Um, and again, 
as long as you use this language, you don't have to worry about how you describe the real and virtual object and image being different for lenses and mirrors. So this is the sign convention. And um, uh, so in the simplest scenarios, uh, what you should expect to see is this, where your object, image, and focal length are, are all positive. And as you make, as we make things more complicated, either introduce diverging lens or uh, uh, have it set up in a situation where we are going to get a virtual image or have a multi-lens setup where you can get virtual object, um, you will see these other signs of these quantities.